If the following scene seems familiar to you, this video is for you. I'll explain when you need to use tsu with an infinitive and when you don't, and I'll show you how these infinitive clauses with tsu differ from relative clauses with das. Ich will heute Deutsch zu lernen. I want to learn German today. You don't need zu with that sentence. Ich sehe heute einen Film anstatt mein Deutschbuch lesen. I am watching a movie today instead of reading my German book. Maybe you should read that German book instead. You need zu in that sentence. Ich verstehe nicht, was ich tun muss, um Deutsch lernen. I don't understand what I have to do in order to learn German. You need zu in that one too. Jetzt reicht's! Ich gehe jetzt zu essen. That's enough. I'm going to eat now. You actually don't need zu in that one. Ah! What is going on? Sometimes you need zu, sometimes you don't. Infinitives in English almost always have zu in front of them. Why don't you use zu in German? This makes no sense. First off, let's define what we're talking about. These phrases that use zu plus an infinitive are called infinitive clauses. They are a type of dependent clause that don't technically have a subject. Basically, it's like having an extra half of a sentence that isn't complete as it doesn't show who's acting stuck to the end of another sentence. This subject is generally shown in the first clause and the infinitive clause implies that same subject, but it doesn't have to be this way. For example, Er versucht uns die Grammatik zu erklären. He attempts to explain the grammar to us. The subject of both halves is er, but the second clause doesn't include er. Instead, it implies that the subject is the same without actually naming it. You can clearly see this if you break the two clauses apart into separate sentences. Er versucht. Er erklärt uns die Grammatik. He attempts. He explains to us the grammar. Now you can clearly see that the subject of the two clauses is the same. When we eliminated the second version, we made it into a dependent clause. We added zu and changed the verb erklärt back into the infinitive form erklären. Let's try a few more examples. Der Verbrecher hat vergessen, seine Fingerabdrücke zu entfernen. The criminal forgot to remove his fingerprints. As I mentioned before, the subject of the first clause does not have to be the same as the subject implied within the dependent clause. For example, Es wundert ihn, ins Gefängnis geworfen zu werden. It surprised him to be thrown in jail. In the first clause, the ambiguous es or it is the subject, whereas in the second clause, it implies that er or he is the subject. As mentioned before, the subject of the dependent clause is not explicitly stated, which is why we still use zu plus an infinitive. This only works if the second clause that we say or write is a dependent clause. If we drop the subject out of the second half of a normal sentence, this does not happen. For example, er nimmt seine Spielzeuge und geht nach Hause. He takes his toys and goes home. He is the subject of both halves of that sentence, but the conjunction und and doesn't trigger a dependent clause, so we keep the conjugated form of gehen, gate. Even if we use a subordinating conjunction, which triggers a subordinate clause, similar to a dependent clause but not quite, we still don't use the zu plus infinitive format, as we keep the subject in the second half of the sentence. Er ging nach Hause, weil er geärgert wurde. He went home because he was annoyed. In this example, the verb was pushed to the end of the sentence, but the subject is still there to tell the verb which form to take. Therefore, we don't need the zu plus infinitive construction. This includes examples using the conjunction das, which is sometimes tricky to understand for German learners. Das is generally translated as that, but this logic doesn't always work out. Er hat herausgefunden, dass er im Lotto gewonnen hat. He found out that he won the lottery. The confusion with this conjunction occurs when you want someone to do something. In English, the action that you want the other person to do is contained within an infinitive clause which uses to. In German, you simply use the conjunction das and you don't need the infinitive clause for the reasons that I've already mentioned. Here are a few examples of that. Ich will, dass du mich willst. I want you to want me. I need you to need me. I'm begging you to beg me. Er möchte, dass sie ihm Abendessen kocht. He wants her to cook him dinner. Sie möchte, 
dass er kein Frauenhasser ist. She would like him to not be a misogynist. Be careful with this thought process, however, as you would use an infinitive clause after the phrase involving Lust haben, which still shows a desire to do something. The difference is that you aren't wanting someone else to do something with Lust haben in those phrases. Er hat keine Lust ins Kino zu gehen. He doesn't have a desire to go to the movies. He doesn't want to go to the movies. If you want to show a desire for someone else to do something after Lust haben, you can do so, but you have to go back to using das with no infinitive. Haben Sie Lust, dass wir Ihnen die Stadt zeigen? Do you have a desire for us to show you the city? Now what about modal verbs or modal auxiliaries? Why don't you use zu with them? Tu is needed in English. Why isn't it in German? The same reasons as before. The subject is named in the sentences with modal verbs, and there is no dependent clause. It lacks both requirements for an infinitive clause to be used. Ich will Deutsch lernen. I want to learn German. Wir müssen die Grammatik verstehen. We have to understand the grammar. Back to the examples that do use infinitive clauses. It's often stated that anstatt, um, and ona are used to create these kinds of clauses. It's important to note that these words actually just facilitate the creation of a dependent clause and are not actually the cause of the infinitive clause. The infinitive clause is created by having a dependent clause that does not have the subject explicitly stated in it. For example, Er geht nach Hause, anstatt mit seinen Freunden zu bleiben. He goes home instead of staying with his friends. Er geht nach Hause, um etwas zu essen. He goes home in order to eat something. Er geht nach Hause, ohne seinen Freunden auf Wiedersehen zu sagen. He goes home without saying goodbye to his friends. Notice that in English we use the verb form with ing at the end with instead of and without, but the infinitive clause with to when we use in order. This discrepancy is generally why these phrases are difficult for English speakers to translate. The bottom line is the same, however. The subject is missing from the dependent clause. Using anstatt or ona or um to facilitate this clause is not necessary for you to understand why you need zu with an infinitive. There are a few more weird ways that the infinitive clauses are used in German. These generally have to do with adding an adverb or adjective to describe the action that takes place in the dependent clause. The grammar is still the same. The subject is not present in a dependent clause. But I thought it would be helpful to see some examples like that too. Es ist schön Sie zu treffen. It's nice to meet you. Es ist jetzt meine Gewohnheit, bis acht im Bett zu bleiben. It is now my habit to stay in bed until eight. Es muss schön sein, so viel Geld zu haben. Must be nice to have so much money. Es ist tragisch, diesen Mann so zu sehen. It's tragic to see this man like this. You can also use an infinitive clause as the subject of a sentence, in which case it goes at the beginning of the sentence. Dieses Video zu verstehen ist ganz einfach. Understanding this video is very simple. Herrn Antrim zu mögen ist sehr schwer. It is very difficult to like Herr Antrim. Deutsch zu lernen ist nicht schwer. Learning German is not difficult. Alright, now that we have the general rules for when to use these infinitive clauses out of the way, let's get to the how. As you have seen in most of my examples, you use the verb that you normally would have conjugated in the infinitive form right after zu. This works when you only have one verb in the clause. Ich vergesse immer, mein Auto zu schließen. I always forget to lock my car. When you use a modal verb, you put the modal verb directly after zu and the other verb directly before it. Both of them should be in the infinitive form. Es ist nicht gut, immer etwas essen zu wollen. It is not good to always want to eat something. Es ist besser, zweimal nachzudenken, als sich einmal entschuldigen zu müssen. It is better to think twice than to have to apologize once. As you can see in the last example, if you have a separable prefix in the verb that you need in the infinitive clause, you put the zu between the prefix and the rest of the verb. This all remains as one word. You can also see the modal verb directly after the word zu, and the other verb is directly before zu. All of those examples are in the present tense. What if we want to write in the past? You can kind of imply all of the other tenses through the main clause. For example, Präsens. Es ist ihm eine Freude, die Kinder wieder zu sehen. It is a joy for him to see the children again. Präteritum. Es war ihm eine Freude, die Kinder wieder zu sehen. It was a joy for him to see the children again. 
Perfect. Es ist ihm eine Freude gewesen, die Kinder wiederzusehen. It was a joy for him to see the children again. Plusquamperfekt. Es war ihm eine Freude gewesen, die Kinder wiederzusehen. It had been a joy for him to see the children again. Futur 1. Es wird ihm eine Freude sein, die Kinder wiederzusehen. It will be a joy for him to see the children again. Futur 2. Es wird ihm eine Freude gewesen sein, die Kinder wiederzusehen. It will have been a joy for him to see the children again. If you want to show a tense in the infinitive clause, it's a bit more difficult. You can't really explicitly use any of the tenses except the past in an infinitive clause. In all of the examples I just showed you, the infinitive clause doesn't actually show a tense at all. It shows a tense in the main clause. If you want to show for sure that the dependent clause and subsequently the infinitive clause is taking place in the past, you need to use a version of the perfect tense. To form the perfect tense, you use a past participle and a helper, either haben or sein. When you put this into an infinitive clause, the past participle goes before zu, and the infinitive of either haben or sein goes after it. You choose between haben and sein in the same way that you would for any other sentence with the perfect tense. Link in the description for a video about the perfect tense and how all of that works. In the meantime, here are a few examples of the perfect tense with infinitive clauses. Sie behauptet, ihr Handy verloren zu haben. She claims to have lost her cell phone. Er hofft, die Prüfung bestanden zu haben. He hopes to have passed the test. Wir versprechen, vor nächstem Donnerstag den Aufsatz geschrieben zu haben. We promise to have written the essay before next Thursday. Now that you're all experts with regards to infinitive clauses in German, you can practice what you've learned in this lesson with a worksheet from my website. Click the link in the description to download your copy today. Das ist alles für heute. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!